I'm Ginger Birkenbuehl. And I'm Esther Ikoro. And we're the hosts of the Honest Field Guide podcast. Entrepreneurship is no joke. The journey is full of anticipation, failure, hope, and disappointment. You'll make money and be totally broke at the same time. The Honest Field Guide podcast tells you the truth. We know being an entrepreneur is crazy hard and you will sometimes cry at dinner. Listen in to be inspired, laugh, and learn how to really thrive on your business journey. On this episode of the Honest Field Guide podcast, the state of LinkedIn, a LinkedIn intervention. It's all about business, people. Are you ready to talk about LinkedIn? Let's talk about LinkedIn. Oh I love God, LinkedIn. I'm it's so my excited. favorite. It's ah. my it's my <laughs> it's my favorite. I'm gonna go redo my resume right now. You've got to make it happen. Okay. LinkedIn is the best. I Link- mean, seriously. I mean, wh- okay. Before we continue, what is your resistance to LinkedIn specifically? Why Why do you have a challenge with LinkedIn? Because I think that your challenge is a universal one. So let's 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 talk a little bit about that. What's yes. going on with you and LinkedIn? What's uh, the problem? LinkedIn, I'll just say it. LinkedIn is so boring. (gasps) LinkedIn is the place where your economics professor is hanging out, (laughs) posting peer-reviewed articles and headshots with very conservative backgrounds. (laughs) So wrong. It's just, I know LinkedIn is exciting. I've been on there and I've seen news. It's like, you know, that channel when you go to the doctor's office like hand, yeah, it's branded like, content channels in the doctor's office. It's totally. branded content channels at the doctor's office, but it usually has to do with like business or economics. It's so sterile. Now, there's, there are gems in it. There are some people on LinkedIn that make content that is exciting. Yes. The problem is for me that I could also consume their content in other ways, right? So Open for Business, the person who does the Open for Business podcast is also an entrepreneur, and I think he's a venture capitalist. Long story short, uh, I can consume his content okay. in the form of a podcast. Gotcha. Or I could consume his content on Instagram as well. So you're like, why read? Just look at pictures and listen. Is that where you're at with us? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I love pictures. I love <laughs> listening. No, but also, like, you know, it's also a human thing. Like, yeah. I'm thinking about, in- uh, about LinkedIn as a consumer gotcha. a lot. Okay. And I almost feel cornered into thinking about LinkedIn as a consumer because everyone on there is so professional. Yes, you're right. And you know what? I'm really glad that you said that because they that's, only that's wear a, blazers. That's, that's like that's they a, wear blazers to the water park. <laughs> they wear blazers to top their hats. Grocery shop. What about shop. top hats? They're so Are there top hats there? Yes. Oh God. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm glad that you brought that up because. You know, when you look at LinkedIn like that, I can see why you would feel that way. What you're expressing is why we're talking about LinkedIn today, because people that are that have a business or that are entrepreneurs, some of them, many of them think the way you're thinking, because that's their visual of LinkedIn. But it's really because they don't necessarily know how to use it really effectively for business. Who is on LinkedIn? Who is on LinkedIn? So, you know, Burt Creative Yes. is a brand strategy agency and I have very large enterprise level global businesses as clients. So first and foremost, my clients are on LinkedIn and they're using it in a multitude of ways. Um, they're using LinkedIn to share their strategic content that they want their customers and their employees to know. So they're sharing high level interesting, relevant information related to their business. And they're also sharing information and content to help drive conversations about their business and their products and their services. So those people and those businesses are on LinkedIn, and that's who I want to know about. Other people on LinkedIn are potentially people that I want to hire. So there are people that are marketing their products and their services to other people on LinkedIn. So there's small businesses, there's entrepreneurs, there's photographers, there's writers, there's people that design clothes, there's journalists, there's people that are IT professionals, all kinds of entrepreneurs and businesses, people that start up companies are on LinkedIn. So these are the kinds of people and businesses that I want to connect with because hopefully not only are they looking at my content, but hopefully they're sharing content that'll help me learn something new about the business I'm in. For example, if you want to know about Google Cloud Services, that is really the perfect place to go because 
Google has a channel for cloud and they share all the innovations that are happening, not only in the cloud ecosystem in general, but also what's happening in cloud specifically related to Google. And then when you start following um, you know, Google Cloud, you also start to get other information about other clouds. So for example, Amazon Web Services or you know, Microsoft, I think it's Azure, things like yeah. that. So for an industry that I'm interested in, which is specifically Google Cloud, that's a place for me to learn more. And there's, there's, there's long form content that influencers in the cloud space are putting out on LinkedIn and I need to know about it. So those people are also out there. There's experts, there's topic experts, there's thought leaders. You know, Tim Cook, um, for example, you know, he is a leader and a thought leader. So you can't actually connect with Tim Cook on LinkedIn, but all of his content is released in a very methodical, deliberate, mindful way. It's all curated and it's typically related to, um, you know, initiatives and ideas that Apple wants to release from the mouth of Tim Cook, who is pretty much their brand visionary right now. He's the CEO of Apple. Um, so those are the types of people on LinkedIn. The other group of people, for example, if you're maybe a nonprofit organization or a foundation, um, other people connected to foundations are there. People that are interested in learning more about a nonprofit or foundation in the hopes that they could say, oh, you know what? This, this foundation is doing great things. I'm going to donate to this foundation. People that donate money. There's also political organizations on there and people that work in politics. There's procurement people, people that buy products and services. And before they make a decision or before they make a recommendation, saying, for example, if there's a company that's responding to an RFP, they're going to go on LinkedIn and take a look at the leaders of that company to see what kind of people they are, what kind of content do they have, who's in their connections. I mean, there's another way for you to find out who am I about to do business with? What do they look like? What do they talk like? What kinds of content are they sharing? What type of content do you put on LinkedIn? I know you can share content, which is great. I'll share all day because other people wrote it. Yep. And I could just comment. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, I think that there's a lot of different ways to share content on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the first place I'll start is many people are intimidated by LinkedIn because it is not a visual experience. It is, it is an experience where you're reading and learning a lot. You know, you're reading a lot of stuff. You're learning a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, as I'm talking about this right now, your eyes are like bugging out, like, Oh my God, stop. Right. You're I like, don't read. do it. I can't read. But you know, people that are on LinkedIn and I'd have to look at the statistics. I'm not even sure, but I would imagine that people on, that are on LinkedIn that are using it as much as I do love to read. They read a lot of books, a lot of articles. They constantly are keeping their um, you know, professional development up to date, you know, and that's another reason to be leveraging LinkedIn in business because you want to stay up to date on your professional development. You don't want to get stale and you certainly don't want to look, um, past your prime on LinkedIn because it's really easy to do that in some ways. And you're looking at me like, well, what does that mean? Oh, look past your prime? Kind of. I mean, you want to, you want to stay current and the way to stay current is to, is to, is especially, especially business perspective, business wise, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a higher scale, you know, larger enterprise level, um, you know, LinkedIn is the best place to be. If you're not ready to write your own content because you're concerned about grammar, consistency, you know, are you writing something interesting, whatever, find relevant content that aligns with your vision, your brand, your strategy, your concept, find that content and then share it on your own channel, right? You can share it on your own company page channel if you have one. If you don't have one, you should get one. Or you can share it from your personal channel. So for example, when Google releases new information about, you know, some, you know, awesome thing that they're doing, for example, when they purchased the historic landmark building in New York, the Chelsea market, um, I, I thought that was great. I thought, wow, this is amazing. But it wasn't just amazing that they purchased the landmark building, but it was actually how much they paid for it. And it was the um, real estate company that helped broker the deal. And one of my industry uh, verticals is real estate. And so I saw that and I thought, well, this is really interesting to me. Google's also my client, my agency client. So I took that, that release information. I shared it through my network. And it was just really fun for me to do that because it was a topic that was interesting to me and it was a client and it was an industry vertical that my business um, works in and serves. That's the type of content you can share. Another thing you can think about doing is writing articles about a topic that interests you. One of the articles I wrote on LinkedIn was how to brag about your business. 
And it was directed specifically to women owned businesses that are a little bit reticent about um, using social media tools to brag about their business or to tell people what they're doing or to share how amazing um, you know, they're doing and how well they're doing in their business. So I put a 10, a 10 point article. These are 10 really simple things you can do that don't feel like bragging, but they kind of are. And it was really simple. It was really short and it was very well received and it got reprinted actually by the 3% conference on their website. It was great. So that's another way you can be sharing interesting content. You could also be thinking about books you've read that you think are great. And you say, you know what, here is a fantastic business book that's talking about information technology in ways that I can understand it. A lot of people are afraid of information technology. They're like, oh my gosh, technology, I'm afraid. Artificial intelligence, is it going to, you know, affect my business or is just too much data? There's too much information. It's too scientific. But if you read books that are interesting and they're finally in a level that you can explain it to people, that's a way that you can be sharing content. People love getting posts about books they're reading. You'd be amazed when you talk about books and ask people what books are you reading. They will come back and respond and tell you, this is what I'm reading. You should try this book. You should try this book or listen to this podcast. So there's all kinds of ways that you can do, you know, interesting, relevant content on LinkedIn without a real heavy editorial lift. Another thing you can think about is, and this is, you know, something that's a little bit higher level. Um, think about, um, uh, finding a writer that can help you write, a ghost writer, for example. Um, somebody that can interview you and ask you questions, prepare an outline for you. You can write to the outline and they can take your content and edit it and help you clean it up. Or you can actually write something yourself after you've maybe had an interview with your writer and they can write it for you. So there's all kinds of ways that you can get help if you're not the best or the most confident writer. Other content that you could think about, um, and this is another conversation we should have for another podcast, um, but LinkedIn is powerful for video content. So if, for example, you did, you potentially are um, being interviewed, or you might even do a TED Talk, or you might be at a conference, or you might have been asked questions and someone was happy to be taping it, or you might have your own YouTube channel, every single time you have audio visual material you can share it on LinkedIn. The best way to share on LinkedIn audiovisual content really is having a YouTube channel. So again, that would be another conversation for a different podcast about how to leverage YouTube for your business. Um, but doing, and you can even actually use a LinkedIn native app. Um, LinkedIn has a great new tool for you to actually do videos right from their app. The only challenge around that is that becomes a LinkedIn, you know, video versus um, a YouTube video, which is more globally accessible. Yeah. So leading off that content conversations, I also want to ask you about strategies as far as sharing and liking things, because with other um, mm -hmm. with other content, um, other platforms on Instagram, for instance, which we talked about last week, people can see the things that you've liked. Yeah. And you want to be consistent as far as things that you share thematically. So LinkedIn I'm just looking at it from my perspective. I would see all these cool topics like AI, marketing, blah, blah, blah. And I would share all of them. Does consistency of the things that you share matter? Or can it get a little scatterbrained sometimes? I think that um, it can get scatterbrained. It just depends on how you're using LinkedIn or how confident you are about using it for your business. So I am not a tourist on LinkedIn, the way you described yourself. I use LinkedIn specifically as a tool to um, promote my client's success, to share um, industry trends that are related to the um, areas that my business is in, and also to enhance my own um, expertise around a topic and share it with other people once I become an expert in that topic. So, um, you know, that's really important to me. So by extension, when I am liking other content, I'm very careful about what I like. And here's the number one reason why. On LinkedIn, when you like content, that content you like will blast throughout the entire community that's connected to you. Oh, I have seen that. So if you like something that is 
you know, like some, here's the other thing. We didn't even get into this yet, but LinkedIn is really to be used for business. It's not a channel that you're posting your vacation pictures. That's not LinkedIn. It's not, it's, it's not a channel where you're posting your baby's first steps. Please don't do that on LinkedIn. Please don't. don't. want to be in a bikini at a business conference. Please do. <laughs> you definitely don't want to do <laughs> Um, it's, it's not a channel where you're, um, you know, posting, you know, how to put on makeup or, you know, where you're not really dressed appropriately, like I said. So, and if you have people in your connections that have images like that and you're liking them, everybody can see that. And there's a couple of things that can happen. One, some of that content you're liking might truly offend one of your customers. They might say, wow, this is popping up in my feed. And this person I'm connected to who I know, they liked it. And oh my gosh, why did they like that image? This is so offensive to me. And it might send the wrong message about you as a business, right? And you just want to avoid that. The other piece is, is when you're liking content that's not relevant to your business, people might be like, what is this person doing? Are they at work today? <laughs> Are they at work today? I mean, Uh-oh. you know, so you don't want to expose yourself like that. I mean, you really can I- until there's a way for you to hide the things you like on LinkedIn, be very careful about what you're liking. See, on Facebook, you can like until there's no tomorrow. There's a setting on Facebook, yeah. which which allows you to not show what you're liking to other people. Did you know that? I, you knew that, right? I did. Say so you did. Yeah. Okay, good. No, I, I knew that, but I don't even. Is yours on or off? My Facebook? Yeah. The stuff you like. Oh, no. No one can see the stuff I like. Thank you. LinkedIn doesn't have that yet. There's, I don't, you know, there's yeah. no way to turn off. I can still see on LinkedIn when people wish other people like four years at blah, blah, blah company. Congratulations. So that's something that, um, you know, there are privacy settings that you can set up where you can okay. shut everything off for some of your activity. But my point is, is that when you're liking things on LinkedIn, there's no way for, for other people to not see that you haven't liked it. And so that's the place you have to be careful when you're there as a business person versus a tourist. Because, you know, what happens is your connections that are connected with you mm-hmm. are connecting with you most likely because you've cultivated your brand to let them know what they're going to expect when they start to connect with you on LinkedIn. And that's the other thing. I mean, people connect with my page on LinkedIn because of the content I've been sharing and they want more of it. How do you even approach a potential client on a service like LinkedIn? Or do you just kind of set up your lemonade stand and, and, you know, hope it's hot enough outside for them to wander to yours? Lemonade. 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 You know, um, that's a great question. I'm using LinkedIn to find out what's interesting for my customers the brands that I work with. I'm also looking for leaders, thought leaders, um, people that are consistently sharing information that I'm interested in. And that content not does not necessarily have to be specifically related to my field. I just want to see and hear a unique voice. Every once in a while, I come across a voice where they're saying something that sounds and looks very divergent from, you know, the wave of, of you know, everyday thought. And those are the people that I want to connect with. And I actually have people like that on my feed that are always putting out cool stuff that nobody else is talking about or they they haven't seen it in the same way. And I think that's really great. So my personal page as president and CEO of Burt Creative, I'm creating a lot of content around industry trends and technology, trends that are happening in my clients' businesses. And I'm also connecting with people in my industry not only entrepreneurs and business owners, but also people that are interested in topics that I'm interested in, like technology, um, um, artificial intelligence, marketing and advertising, different ways of using um, digital marketing. You know, how do you create videos and television commercials? Things like that that are happening in my industry that are relevant. And also finding out about events and, um, you know, global um, global um, opportunities that are going on in my field. So the way that I use my page is, is really to be clear that I have interest in specific topics and I'm presenting my page in a very professional way because I'm representing my company. And so then um, for my employees and staff, they're also representing my company as well. It's a little different when you're working for a global company like 
McDonald's or Google because you're dealing with stock prices and potential, you know, issues of fluctuation if your staff or your employees say something that, you know, scares shareholders. You know, I'm not in that space and other small businesses like mine are not either. So I'm not saying there's no risk, but the risk level is just very different. So with that in mind, how do you gauge the health of your either company page or your personal page that is tied to your small business? I love that question because it's difficult to gauge analytics on LinkedIn the way it is on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. It's a very different process. Well, LinkedIn company pages um, are not really designed and set up the way Facebook pages are. Um, Getting people to your company page requires a high level of spend on advertising. The acquisition rate per person to like your company page is significantly higher than the acquisition cost um, to get someone to like your page on Facebook. Um, Facebook is a consumer ready platform um, and it's well designed for small businesses and entrepreneurs and startups. LinkedIn on, LinkedIn on the other hand with their company pages, they're really more suited at least at the moment um, for large brands and large businesses. Designed for companies like Google and McDonald's, Toyota, you know, companies like that um, have much wider reach. And in part because they have thousands and thousands of employees liking their company pages. So they get better analytics. You know, they get better data. They get better results because they have lots of people interacting with their pages. Small businesses that might have under 50 employees, they're not going to necessarily generate the same level and amount and volume of content that these large companies. So company pages are really challenging for small business on LinkedIn. And I don't necessarily advise small businesses to invest in getting people to their company pages because the acquisition rate, like I said earlier, is higher. But for um, a personal page, as a person that works for a small company or as an executive, um, you can gauge engage you can gauge the health of it by how many people are engaging with your content, who's liking your page, your content, who's requesting your connection, how many are you getting? Um, are you getting people that have never engaged with your page before asking to be your connection? You know, the more content you release on LinkedIn, it's almost like the Instagram recommended. Uh, pages to follow. You know, LinkedIn is the same way in some ways. It's not quite as obvious, but your content, if you're a frequent releaser and poster of content, will show up in other people's feeds, even people that you don't know. Also, when you become a LinkedIn premium member, you get even better results because you're paying. What's LinkedIn premium? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm glad you asked about LinkedIn premium because you um, have an opportunity to spend a little bit money, a money, a little bit of money per month. I love when I have the opportunity to spend money. (laughs) Man, I wish I had an opportunity (laughs) to spend money. Why can't we ever get those opportunities? It's real. It's really helped me hone the craft of writing, business writing. A little bit more than I've even been able to do working for companies before I opened my own business. I mean, I feel like that's kind of, you know, we Fair talked enough. about we talked about that in earlier pro and an earlier protest and earlier. <laughs> we, we talked about opportunities we t- <laughs> to spend money. We want opportunities to spend money. The more you post, the better you get. The more that's confidence true. you get, and so on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. the more you write, the better writer you become. And it's really a place for me to hone my skills. And I suggest for other people that are kind of hesitant about writing it's really a great place to do so especially for people that don't write for a living there are also people looking for partnerships they're looking for companies to join voice for voices <laughs> damn those tacos the tacos, tacos the made tacos. you sound like a, a mid-century I chimney know. sweep um voices that's that's i mean that's the other great thing about linkedin because when you're use when you are using linkedin as a professional business person and when you have your own business and you're an entrepreneur there are other entrepreneurs looking for partners they're looking for people to join forces together because there is something about scale so you know you asked earlier you know how do you know if you're being successful with my linkedin somebody found me on linkedin and they wanted to do a global podcast because they were following me on linkedin they're like you know what this ceo is an expert in this topic and i want her to join my global, you know, podcast that I'm going to be broadcasting from Dubai. And she would have never found me had I not been consistently putting content out about particular topics that she said fit right into what she was looking for. Um, When you think about 
um, larger companies that might want to hire you. Um, there's companies that have reached out to me because of my content on LinkedIn and because of the presentation I'm giving, which is showing very professional, high integrity, high communication skills, as well as my marquee elite network of businesses that are connected to my company. And that makes other companies want to join with what I'm doing. And so there's a lot of opportunity from small business perspective, medium sized business perspective and entrepreneurs that are, that are helpful for LinkedIn. I mean, if you have even um, a startup company or you have a, an invention, people are looking for inventors on LinkedIn. Companies are looking for innovators and unicorns on LinkedIn. They really are. They're looking for people that are doing different things. I mean, think about this. McDonald's is looking for a customer to buy their hamburgers and fries on Instagram and Facebook. Do you think that they're looking for the retail customer on LinkedIn? What do you really think? Do you think they're looking for that there? No, I think they're looking for employees and strategic partners, and they're looking to maintain their presence and visibility. Things that are very important, yeah. not only to their employees, but also important to their shareholders and mm -hmm. their global partners. Yeah. So there's a lot of amazing professional business related content that you could be sharing because it actually professionalizes you and professionalizes your company. The challenge is when you don't have a professional profile and you're running a business, people are going to LinkedIn to find out about who you are and they can't see anything. And they're really not sure. Are they real or not? It's like what you said, if you're not there, you don't exist. Yeah. In the business world, you know, not having um, a LinkedIn presence, I find to be problematic. For example, I was coaching this senior level executive at a corporation and she was very hesitant about having a LinkedIn profile because she was, you know, generally fearful about saying the wrong thing. And so my advice was, I don't blame you for being nervous about sharing the wrong thing. At the very least, get your profile up, have your picture and find other people's content to share. What does spam look like on LinkedIn? Because I know there's spam. What do you think it looks like? I got a message on LinkedIn and I don't know if it's spam or not. Tell me what it is. Can you read it out loud? Yes. This just came into my in-mail. Dear Esther, my name is blank blank. I'm the lead recruiter for blank blank staffing located in insert city. I have a new full-time opportunity with a really fun company that's located near West Loop, Chicago. This job requires you to work on site. Not sure if you're open and or interested in this type of contract, so I wanted to reach out and run it by you. If you could, please reply slash accept this message. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for your time and consideration. Gotcha. It's okay. a position for a content strategy lead. Okay. <laughs> Full-time. <laughs> this shouldn't be funny. I me. love this, but Esther's laughing and cracking up at the LinkedIn because she doesn't like LinkedIn so much. So this it's really funny. Be funny to me. But, but it is funny. It is funny. Pay rate one hundred thousand dollars, depending on what? experience. What? <laughs> what is that job? I need it. <laughs> it came into my inbox. Okay, so first of all, and my it spam, is... my spam flag went up because. Okay. If people don't just randomly pop into my inbox, but yeah. I'm also not active on LinkedIn, offering me or wanting to see if I'm interested in a hundred thousand dollar job. Yes. So okay, first Maybe of that's all, a limiting belief. First of all, it is, it is, it is, it is, and it is not spam. So I don't really know if that's a bot that's been that's that's been sent through. But a lot of recruiters are constantly and consistently looking for people to recruit because they have clients that need employees. So they, they, they probably really are trying to find people, whether or not you were specifically targeted or whether this is sort of a blanket message that's going out to as many people as possible to get them to work, to get them to answer is, is the question. The other thing is um, they have the ability to send an in-mail to people that they're not connected to because they have a paid LinkedIn account. And so that's why you're getting that message. Um, so it's, it is and it isn't spam, right? It does have a paid LinkedIn account. It's gold. Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So what you can do um, if you don't want to get messages like that is that you can set up um, privacy settings on LinkedIn to say that you're not open for business opportunities and you'll stop getting messages like that. So that's something that you have control over. But it's not really spam. Um, 
you know, that's one of the dark sides, I think, of LinkedIn is that recruiters are um, bombarding people like you and other people offering opportunities and they don't necessarily pan out. And sometimes they're not even real recruiters. I mean, his picture, as Esther's showing it, is it's an interesting picture. I don't know that, you know, he's in a black tie and it's half off of his neck. It's extremely blurry. <laughs> it's an extremely blurry photograph. Right. So, I mean, it might you First might be red flag. <laughs> so you might be questioning, you know, whether or not this is a legitimate recruiter or not. I would suggest that. And we we should definitely talk about this a little bit. You know, when you're on LinkedIn and when you have a professional profile, um, your image needs to be crisp and clear and professionally presented. Um, you know, whether you are in a suit, a tie, a dress, a dress suit, something clean and organized um, that represents your business well. For example, one of my connections, um, you know, he is an olive oil expert and he actually just sent me a book and it's a wonderful, wonderful book about the science and technology behind olives and how they make olive oil his image is him in front of you know a vineyard so you know it makes sense for him to be in a natural environment um you know other people that are on my LinkedIn (laughs) profiles sorry I thought you were gonna say his image is him dressed as an olive (laughs) I just I was like where is this going what could his image be (laughs) his image is him drinking a martini I don't know. I just, I was waiting for like, what? So it sounds like it's, no, seriously, it sounds like I have not convinced you. No, I'm to use, I mean, really, you're supposed to be convinced to use. I am convinced. Because there are so many people out there like you that are not sure what to do on LinkedIn. And it's, it's, it's really more than a platform for people looking for a job. I mean, when you are a leader, when you are a thought leader, when you're an expert, It's a great opportunity to share your expertise with audiences that actually care. Okay. I'm convinced. (laughs) I'm convinced. I am. Blank, blank from the recruiter from blank, blank over there. $100,000 job. I was like, no, (laughs) you're not going to Nigerian prince me. (laughs) Okay, wait. Let's talk about the Nigerian prince. I want to know what you mean by that. Um, because I mean, you know, give some back, give some, give some background though. Why, like, what's un- what's so, happening on the now, Nigerian print side? I will tell you that spam comes in all shapes and sizes right. from all countries, but Nigerians, being the overachievers that they are, and you say that confidently because I say that confident because Nigerians are very hard workers at everything they do, okay. including spam. Right now. And um, you are. I'm Nigerian. Thank oh, you. So like, let's be clear. Okay. Yes, I am Nigerian, so I get to make this <laughs> you joke. Self-serving <laughs> I person. Am, yes. So uh, very good at creating spam. Um, Wait. Lots Nigerians, of the most... Nigerians are very great at creating spam. Yeah, because that's where the joke comes from. I'm a Nigerian. Prince. Really? If you send me some money, then I can get you know my inheritance out. Oh, I and love then you, it. You Western Union the money, and you never wow. get a response to your email. That's why when people make jokes about spam, they're like, oh, are you a Nigerian princess? Because <laughs> and it plays on Western greed gotcha. because there are a lot of Westerners making a lot of money in Nigeria. There are a lot of rich families in Nigeria. Gotcha. There's a lot of natural resources. Gotcha. So it's plausible. But why would I be emailing you out of the blue? Right. You right, know what I mean? Right. Exactly. But there are still people. So that's old. So I love I and mean, I. Spam has evolved, but yeah. that the Nigerian Prince story right. has kind of become but synonymous I love, with but spamming I love, Americans. But I love that you're saying that because this just is a perfect. And this guy's white. Is, oh this is God. a this is a per <laughs> this is a perfect lead though. Please know your audience. Yeah. Before I mean, know your audience and have some cultural competency when you're doing this kind of outreach because you know you have a different perception when you get a message like that than Mm. I have. You have to have some cultural um, awareness when you are communicating on a channel like LinkedIn, Mm. because LinkedIn is, is not a picture based channel. It's a messaging channel where people read and they, and they're, they're looking at long form content that may or not be culturally appropriate or culturally relevant, depending on who you're talking to. So it's, it's actually, you know, important that you said that because um, when you're putting content on LinkedIn, all kinds, I have all kinds of connections on my channel. I have all kinds of people from all over the world that are connected to my profile. So 
I'm very cognizant of, of not creating content that is so exclusively or so specifically about, you know, um, like, um, women, for example, or, you know, um, you know, America, USA, everything, because my clients are also global based clients. Mm. You know, my clients do business all over the world, everywhere. So I'm glad that you brought that up because yes. it's really important. I mean, you did not receive that message the way I would have received it. And we're going to have another topic on a podcast about diversity and inclusion. So I responded to the message and he has responded what did you, back. What did you say? <laughs> Do you want to read back what LinkedIn you said? LinkedIn gave me an option to respond in a generic way. See, I love that. So they're actually having and artificial so intelligence helping you um, respond. So, what did you say? Let's let's read. read Esther's going to read her response to the the, blank, recru blank. the recruiting bot i said hi blank thanks for reaching out i'd like to learn more when we first uh got together for work the first thing i noticed was your linkedin photo oh no and the header in the background yes were so opposite i did they didn't match up. They didn't line up. I didn't know what was going on with it. And I do realize now, of course, that LinkedIn is not a channel that you have been comfortable in. Okay. And so you haven't taken care of it. You haven't cultivated it. You haven't curated it like you've curated Instagram. And I totally mm -hmm. appreciate that. Um, so using yours as an example, your image profile, which by the way, we've since updated because my wonderful agency photographer, Jeff Shorentino Photography, took a great profile image of you on location recently and so now you have a wonderful profile photo but profile photos are really important people are wanting to know what you look like and I know some people are hesitant about putting their images because they don't want people to know what they look like and there's a whole lot we can unpack around that especially when it comes to people of color but we're not going to do that today but having a, a profile photo that is clear professional bright upbeat in focus and crisp against an appropriate background that's relevant to your business. And if you don't have a background that's relevant, at least shoot it with a plain background. But you don't want it to look like a mugshot, right? I mean, you want it to have some kind of personality. Um, really important to have that. Your, your, your profile header image, you can just use the LinkedIn standard images, which are a blue background with, I think, the it's like astronomy or, you know, you know star, star signs or something. You can do that. Or you can find some, you know, great stock photos. Um, I think there's a couple of places where you can get free images, pixelbaby.com. I think you can get free pictures. Or you can just use something more professional like Getty Images and drop that in the background. And it can be any kind of a background. It can be constellations. It can be, you know, an ocean scene if that's appropriate for what you think. Something that's clean and simple, not cluttered. Definitely um, brighter, not darker. Things like that. The other things that make up a good um, professional LinkedIn profile, whether you're working for yourself or you're working for a company or, you know, whatever you're doing in your career, have your title of what you want to be versus what you maybe are. So, and I say that meaning you could say vice president, which is perfectly fine. Vice president doesn't really say anything so much. Um, you might want to include, you know, like you have on your profile, um, content strategist, right? What do you have on your profile? It's a description of what you're doing and what content you want to be strategist. doing. Content strategist. So make it very clear what you do or make it clear what you want to do. The other thing that makes a great LinkedIn profile are having examples of work that you've done. There's so many features on LinkedIn that allow you to upload videos, PowerPoint presentations, PDFs, and definitely links to your website. There's ways that you can enhance the type of work that you're doing. Make sure that on your profile, your education is listed with the most recent education. If you, unless you went to some amazing high school and you graduated with some amazing person, I don't know necessarily that you need to list your high school on a LinkedIn profile. Unless you went to Whitney Young. <laughs> <laughs> well, Whitney Young is a great high school. Michelle Obama graduated from there and like so I did said. the Wachowski sisters from The Matrix. Like I said. Okay, fine. Unless you went to Whitney Young. <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> and, you know, for those of you listening, I'm getting shade because I went to Whitney Young and Esther did not. I did not. And that's all we have to say I about that. I did not. What else makes a good LinkedIn profile? Um, listing 
the places you've worked, I don't know if I'd go super far back. I mean, there's people that have been working for 60 years. I don't know if you need to go all that far back. You might want to just list the highlights. Um, If you're an entrepreneur or if you're a startup and you started up many companies, absolutely list every single company you started up with. Definitely do that. Indicate all the boards you're affiliated with. And for sure, list the things you're interested in. And if you do want to have people reach out to you for jobs or for nonprofit boards, you should indicate things like that. But for sure, the most important thing to me is that there's interactive content on your profile. So I have website listed. I have my I have my um, my YouTube videos. I have certain YouTube videos that I think are relevant to my business as a CEO of Burt Creative. I have certain presentations. Your YouTube videos? I do. I have them on my LinkedIn profile. Those things enrich the profile and give another person a visual and an understanding of what I sound like, how I move, what I talk like, and what things are interesting to me. It just helps give a better picture about who you are as a person so that someone can make a decision. I want to hire them. I want them to work for me. I want to work with them. I want to partner with them. That's what LinkedIn's for. LinkedIn is try, is to try to increase your network. I mean, in the old, old, olden days, I mean, you know, you had to go places and shake hands. And you don't do that anymore. You use social media channels to meet people and to make connections and to network. And LinkedIn is a beautiful place for business networking. It's not all fun and games on LinkedIn. That's the other thing. I don't people, believe that at all. People are... I never thought it was fun and games. You know what, though? But there's people that are trying to make it fun and games. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you talked about spam earlier, I've gotten messages in mail from men asking me out on dates. It's not appropriate. (laughs) I'm there for business. No, that's crazy. It's it's, But it happens. So those are some ways that you can um, make your LinkedIn profile really wonderful. And then as far as a company page is concerned, having branded images, your logo, your company video, your header profile images, and at least what's that shiny stuff. Yeah. At least one article that you can have someone write about your business or about a topic that's related to your industry, at least one. And for your company page, make sure that you have a YouTube channel for your business, you know, and then when you have a YouTube channel for your business, put that YouTube video on your LinkedIn profile. And so if you don't have a a video for your business, here's something else to think about as an option. Google has a new product called YouTube Director. And YouTube Director is a really inexpensive but high quality opportunity to have someone from YouTube show up at your office, help you write a script and shoot a video and boom, you have a YouTube video. And they're not charging too much money to make these videos for you. And so you can have a corporate branded video for yourself, which uses your branding and uses either your staff or yourself to talk about your ser- your service and product. And you have a 30 second video boom done on YouTube. There's ways to enhance your image on LinkedIn very effectively in a cost effective way. How do you gather data? Like, so you've told me a little bit about how to gauge the health of your profile. Is there any data that you can scrounge up from LinkedIn the way that let's say switching your Instagram to a business profile gives you access to data about age, location, optimal posting times and things like that. What data does LinkedIn make available? Gender. And is LinkedIn linked, pun intended, to any other companies? Like I know Facebook owns Instagram. Where's LinkedIn from? Well LinkedIn was just acquired by Microsoft. So my guess is that I'm um, not surprised because look at it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they're slowly adding more features to LinkedIn because micro- it's under the Microsoft fold now. So I think over the next year or probably less, we're going to see more features for LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn has a different data reporting mechanism. It's just not the same. You get more information with a paid account with LinkedIn. So I okay. have a paid LinkedIn account. And because of that, I can see um, certain companies and, and, and how many people and how many views I've gotten on certain posts that I've made from my own personal channel. So there's, you know, limited amount of data information. Sprout Social um, is a tool that I use to help me with all my social media content for my company. Um, You can also be looking at HubSpot. You can also be looking at, um, I think, Hootsuite as well. Um, You can connect those accounts. And then Hootsuite or Sprout Sprout Social, which is my preferred 
um, content management system for social media. Um, they can pull data for you and you can get reports from there and they're really excellent and they're very robust. So that's really the way that I like to head with LinkedIn. Now, if you're a large company, there's there are some other enterprise solutions that you could be using to get more data. I mean, LinkedIn does have um, specialized account representatives that work with the larger brands. But when you're a small business, it's just tougher all over for us. I mean, we have we have to work very differently, much more, um, um, uh, you know, intelligently and efficiently to use these tools to our advantage because we're not spending the number of dollars that these larger companies are spending on this, on the channels like LinkedIn and Facebook. So it's 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 a little bit of a struggle. It's not as easy, um, you know, to get analytics. Um, and in particular, Facebook is more is is designed more for um, you know the type of analytics for that a business can get through their Facebook for Business channels. Okay. LinkedIn, the channel of champions. <laughs> right, Lester? Yes. The channel of champions. The it ch- is. I feel when Microsoft went to acquire LinkedIn, they put a piece of white bread and then they put a donut on the table and they chose the white bread and they're like, it's a deal. <laughs> this <laughs> That's is a very perfect. good company fit here. <laughs> I just feel like you're poised for greatness for the role. <laughs> This is that's perfect. I love it. I mean, LinkedIn in closing, and that was great, is a channel that if you are not using it right now and you are an entrepreneur, a startup, a person in any kind of business field, you need to be on LinkedIn. If you if you do not if you do not feel comfortable writing your own content, at least as Esther said earlier, be a tourist and learn and read and figure out how you can fit in as a professional person. When you get the confidence to start writing, just take some chances and write little tiny posts. And they could be posts that you're commenting on someone else's post that you're resharing. And it should be in a related field or a related interest topic. And above all, be very careful in terms of what you're liking on LinkedIn, because whatever you like, your entire connections, all of your connections will see everything you've liked. It will go on blast in their feed in LinkedIn. Finally, do not send messages through in-mail or to people's email boxes unless they're designed exclusively for the person that's getting the message. Make sure you put the person's name and you customize an individual message because otherwise it will come across looking like spam. But LinkedIn is a wonderful channel. You can network really well and it's it's not as intimidating as networking in person. You could go into a giant room a la LinkedIn, meet people, say hello. You can be standing there all by yourself and it's not quite as, in, as intimidating as walking into an event of thousands of people knowing no one and trying to to meet and connect and say hi and shake hands. I mean, LinkedIn can be used that way for, for those that are, you know, socially awkward in person. It's true. You can. Oh, okay. I thought you were looking in my direction. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you're not socially awkward at all. Oh, I am. No, you're you not. kidding me? You're socially awkward? Maybe okay, well, LinkedIn is a place that you can hide behind social awkwardness and you can use it to your advantage. And I highly recommend it. Don't leave LinkedIn on the table when it comes to your business. Don't leave money on the table. Don't. LinkedIn is a place where you can, you know, do a lot of wonderful things and enhance your brand reputation. That's all. Well, that's today's episode of the Honest Field Guide podcast. I'm Esther Coro, And I'm Ginger Birkenbuehl. And our next episode, we're going to be talking about the state of diversity. Wow, that's going to be deep. That's a big one. Yikes. That's a big one. Yikes. The yeah. state of diversity. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. It's going to be us, right? It has to be <laughs> black women. <laughs> trust black women. Hashtag trust black Hashtag women. Hashtag trust black women. The Honest Field Guide podcast is produced by Burke Creative, written and created by Ginger Birkenbuehl and Esther Coro. The podcast is recorded in the innovation and technology capital of the Midwest, Chicago, at Stomping Ground Studios in Ukrainian Village. Original music is written by and provided courtesy of Utah Carroll. Follow Honest Field Guide on Instagram and Twitter.